morning all of you. Uh, so let us uh, today continue on the discussion with respect to the fully developed <coughs> both uh, hydrodynamically and thermally uh, fully developed region. So I denote this as uh, region 3. And we solved uh, for the velocity profile in the hydrodynamically fully developed region. We got a parabolic velocity profile, and uh, we also started the solution to the heat transfer problem. The first case that we took was uh, a constant wall flux boundary condition. So, Q wall double prime is constant, and for this particular case, uh, we have also uh, have shown that uh, if your q wall is constant that means your dt wall by dx should be equal to dtm by dx this comes because of the fact that this is equal to h into t wall minus tm okay also we have uh, expanded the fact for thermally fully developed flows you have the non dimensional temperature gradient variation axially is 0. So from which uh, we had obtained an expression for dt by dx in terms of uh, dt wall by dx and dtm by dx that was um, <coughs> dt wall by dx minus t minus t wall by tm minus t wall into dt wall by dx plus t minus t wall by t m minus t wall d t m d t mean by t x correct. Uh, so you can note the partial and uh, the standard derivative that I am using here. So this is a function of only x, this is a function of only x whereas temperature is a function of both r and x therefore I use a partial derivative for dt by dx okay. So now if you substitute this result okay if you call this as number 2 and this is number 1 substituting the consequence uh, 2 into 1 you cancel of these terms because they are identical and therefore you come to the conclusion that my dt by dx should be equal to dt wall by dx which in turn is equal to dtm by dx and we have seen that this can be possible only if these are equal to a constant because this is a function of both r and x but these are only a function of x. So this can be holding true the slopes can be the same if, if this is equal to a constant and therefore if you plot the variation of temperature axially so you can visualize. Uh, for example, a temperature profile so where you have T wall x here you can calculate T mean x and of course this is your T x comma r. So if you plot your temperature somewhere here local temperature along the axial direction. So you can say that this follows a profile linear profile like this maybe somewhere at this radial location okay so this is the center and the mean profile will be slightly lower than the temperature of the at this particular radial location. So you can say that this is your so this is at some particular radial location we can say r equal to r1 for example okay that is this particular location where I am plotting this r equal to r1 and at the wall of course that will be the highest temperature amongst all the three and that will also vary linearly like this okay. 
So this is the characteristic of uh, the temperature variation as far as the constant heat flux boundary condition is concerned. So all the three variations are identical, they are just parallel to each other, but they keep varying with the axial position. So that is the characteristic nature of the fully thermally fully developed, of course they have to be hydrodynamically fully developed also. Now having seen this, we wanted to calculate actually the temperature profile itself. So if you substitute the fact that your uh, dt by dx is actually a constant that is equal to some dt wall or dt wall by dx or dtm by dx into the energy equation, okay. So therefore it becomes much, much easier to integrate the energy equation directly. So you have uh, u by alpha, now the dt by dx can be replaced as some dtm by dx now which is a constant equal to t square t by dx square plus uh, okay so we have neglected the axial conduction uh, in comparison to the magnitude of the radial conduction so therefore we'll retain only the radial conduction terms r dt by dr okay so now since the left hand side is a constant we can just integrate it out the same way we integrated the velocity profile where your dp by dx was a constant. So this is a much uh, simpler uh, way of uh, looking at the solution. So if you integrate it twice I am not going to spend time integrating I will give you the final expression 1 by alpha dt by dx which is actually a constant so I can either use dt by dx or dtm by dx they just mean the same and they are they are just constants. Uh, so you have uh, uc r square by 4 minus r power 4 by 16 r naught to the power 2 plus c1 ln of r plus c2. So this is what I get uh, somewhat similar to the velocity profile where you had a pressure gradient in, in terms uh, in the place of this dt by dx you had dp by dx there and you had a similar variation okay. So now we have to find the constants uh, c1 and c2 and in order to do that we have to apply boundary conditions once again two boundary conditions are required okay. So what are the two boundary conditions? Okay. So at r equal to r naught, let us say the temperature uh, is equal to some t wall, of course, which is a function of x. Okay. So if you want to apply at a particular axial location, so that that there is a particular wall temperature which is a boundary condition. And at r equal to zero, the temperature has to be finite. Now if you look at this directly similar to the velocity profile if for a finite temperature at the center your C1 should directly be 0 because this term otherwise goes to infinity okay. So therefore we directly eliminated C1 so we can use the other boundary condition R equal to R0 T is equal to T wall to calculate the second constant C2. So if you substitute uh, you can determine the constant uh, it will come out as uh, so at r equal to uh, 0 r equal to r naught t will become t wall this will be t wall of x minus this entire thing goes to the left hand side this is uc by alpha into so now this is evaluated at r naught so this is r naught square by 4 minus r naught square by 16 okay so if you simplify it it comes out as uh, so the you can take 1 r naught square into dtm by dx okay I can maintain this as dtm by dx into 3 r naught square by 16 I think can you just uh, check if this is correct uh, this is t wall minus uh, you see by alpha r naught square 
this this R naught square cannot come here. I think this R naught square should not come here, right? So it is just three R naught square by sixteen. Okay, so so this is your C two, and therefore you can substitute for C one and C two and write your final expression. If uh, C one is anyway zero, so therefore T of R comma X. So you can substitute for C two, and you see uh, U C by alpha D T M by D X. So this is a common term. Here and here, so that can be just taken out as a common term. So, of course, you have your T wall of x, which which can be written as this minus U C into. Uh, we can also pull out R naught square as common by alpha. So U C, you can take out one R naught square, so that everything can be expressed as non-dimensional. Form an R naught square also is here into uh, DTM by DX that is also common. So this will be left with uh, 3 by 16, which is this, plus you have 1 by 16. Uh, so you have already R naught square taken out. So this will be uh, 1 by 16. R by R naught the whole power four. Okay, and this remaining term will be R by R naught one by four. This will be minus one by four R by R naught the whole power two. Okay, so this will be a final expression for temperature variation. Let us let us call this as uh, equation number three. So therefore, you can see at this state, it appeared like T is a function of uh, only R because your DTM by DX was constant. But once you calculated this constant C two, now it is a function of X through T wall. Therefore, the final expression for T is a function of both R and X. All right. Okay, so once you got the expression for temperature, we will go ahead and calculate uh, the expression for the mean temperature, which we defined, or the bulk temperature, or the mixing cup temperature. So, how was the mean temperature defined? So, we now know the uh, variation of T with respect to both X and R. Now, we should get an expression for the mean temperature varying with x okay and of course the wall temperature or t minus tm minus t wall okay the difference between them so how do we define the mean temperature yeah so it is basically a mass weighted average of temperature and how do you mass weight 0 to r not t into so what is the mass rho into a into u okay in the numerator and denominator the rho can cancel off so you have u uh, and of course u is a function of only r okay and what is the differential area 2 pi r dr 2 pi cancels in the numerator and denominator you have r dr in the denominator it has to be divided by the mass flow rate Okay, so zero to R naught, you have U of R into R dr. Okay, so therefore you have the velocity profile. Uh, I'll just uh, write down the velocity profile for you again. So your U of R is one by nu. Uh, okay, minus one by four nu into dP by dx. R naught square into one minus R by R naught a whole square. So this is your velocity profile, and this is your temperature profile right here. So you have to plug both these inside, and uh, you know. So this DTM by DX is a constant. DP by DX is a constant. Okay. 
So therefore, you will have to integrate this with respect to R. You have to multiply all the terms with respect to R, and then you have to integrate it. It's a little bit lengthy integration, which uh, I'm not doing. You can also, if you find it uh, too difficult, you can also use uh, Mathematica and try to do the integral. But finally, if you do that, the expression for Tm comes out as T wall of x minus 11 by 48 into uc r naught square by 2 alpha into dtm by dx okay so this let us call this as number 4 this is the variation of mean temperature with respect to x okay so therefore you can see uh, your t tm minus t wall is going to be a constant because dtm by dx is a constant okay so the difference between the two tm minus t wall has to be a constant all right so uh, once you got your tm now we can take calculate the non dimensional temperature so your non dimensional temperature is defined as t minus t wall of x by tm of x minus t wall of x okay so now you have of course t minus t wall an expression for t minus t wall here from the temperature profile and also an expression for tm minus t wall here okay so if you just uh, substitute those expressions so t minus t wall will be uh, so you have your uh, uc r not square by alpha into dtm by dx into 3 by 16 plus 1 by 16 r by r not to the power 4 minus 1 by 4 r by r not square so that is basically t minus tw there is a minus sign but in the numerator and denominator the minus sign cancels out similarly tm minus t wall will be minus of that i cancel the minus sign so this will be 11 by 48 into ucr not square by 2 alpha into dtm by dx so dtm by dx cancels uh, your ucr not square cancels alpha cancels out okay so this will give you an expression as 96 by uh, 11 because you have 48 into 2 so that goes up 96 by 11 into this entire factor here huh? 3 by 16 plus 1 by 16 r by r not to the power 4 minus 1 by 4 r by r not square so this is your final expression for theta now once you have calculated your non dimensional profile now you can see the non dimensional profile is not a function of x now okay the way we defined your theta in the thermally fully developed region theta is supposed to be independent of x so and that is what comes out correctly okay so this uh, proves the fact that the assumption what we did of course we use that assumption also but uh, that correlates with what we find finally for theta so this is only a function of r now uh, you can use this definition of theta and calculate your heat transfer coefficient we had shown that in the case of thermally and hydrodynamically fully developed flows the heat transfer coefficient has to be a constant now we have to determine what is that constant value so for the constant heat flux case we have arrived at the particular profile for non dimensional temperature so i'll probably give you about 5 minutes you can from this step calculate what is the heat transfer coefficient
I suggest all of you to do it yourself and check. Okay. So, therefore, finally, you get your heat transfer coefficient as a constant value for a given diameter k by d into 48 by 11. Therefore, you can define a Nusselt number okay, for internal flows based on the diameter of the duct. So, it is not a local Nusselt number anymore, and if you define like that, you get a constant value 4.36. So, for internal laminar flows both hydrodynamically and fully developed and for a constant heat flux boundary condition this is your constant value of Nusselt number 4.36. Okay. So, the, therefore, you see that internal flows are quite different there is no local variation once you reach a completely fully developed condition and after that the heat transfer coefficient is becoming a constant value. So, even in your external flows uh, in one of the quiz problems I had given you the porous uh, flat plate where your uh, suction is continuously happening on the surface and uh, you, are, you are asked to prove at large values of x your boundary layer thickness is becoming a constant and therefore as a consequence of this the heat transfer coefficient also becomes a constant. So, even in external flows if you maintain a suction boundary condition you can show that your heat transfer coefficient can become a constant somewhere down the line. In the case of internal flows that is true if you have a fully developed flow region okay and now um, so this is a straightforward case as far as relatively straightforward when you look at in terms of the simplification that we have done for the constant heat flux now let us look at the other boundary condition which is your what constant wall temperature so only these two boundary conditions are the primary boundary condition that we will see one is a Dirichlet boundary condition the other is an Hyman boundary condition. Okay. Now, when you look at uh, constant wall temperature what this means your d t wall by d x is 0 correct. So, now let us go back to our uh, equation for d t by d x and substitute this expression what do you get. So, if you substitute dt wall by dx is 0 in that expression yeah correct this will be partial derivative you are right. So, I want all of you to also participate you have to tell me if uh, you apply this condition dt by dt wall by dx is 0 what will be the resulting expression for dt by dx. <laughs> Yeah, T minus T wall by T m minus T wall into D T m by D x. Okay. So, the other first two terms get cancelled off you have only this last term. So, now this is your approximation for D T by D x uh, right. So, of course, your mean temperature is only a function of x, but this t here this is the problem this is a function of both x and r. So, now if you substitute this into the energy equation now what happens. So, you in your energy equation on the left hand side you have your uh, d t by d x. So, if you substitute in place of that you have now u by alpha into d t by d x I am going to substitute this particular expression here t minus t wall by t minus t wall into d t m by d x. So, this is equal to of course, your 1 by r d by d r into r d t d r. So, now this is what you need to solve okay, let me let me call this as another equation number 1. Okay, so, this is the energy equation 
which you need to solve to find the temperature profile. Now the problem with this, now earlier when you had constant heat flux, the left hand side was completely a constant, okay. you had only dTm by dx which again was a constant, therefore you could directly integrate it out. Now you have T minus T wall by Tm minus T wall, now T is actually not a constant now. So this entire expression now has to, cannot be solved analytically the way that we did last case. So therefore we have to do it numerically and also iteratively. So one way of doing it is you can uh, guess some uh, value of temperature profile preferably from the earlier case the constant heat flux case and substitute as a first guess and then you can integrate it along the radial direction okay and again get a new temperature profile and again keep putting it on the left hand side and keep doing it until you reach a converged solution okay. So the other smarter way of doing it is again go back to our shooting technique. So we should try to reduce this equation to another simpler form where we can apply shooting technique and solve that equation. So that is what we are going to uh, do now okay. What I am going to do now first uh, let me before before going into the shooting technique we have to prepare uh, uh, we have to get appropriate expressions for dtm by dx so to do that uh, we will do a small energy balance uh, so let us uh, look at the profiles of temperature t as a function of x of course your wall temperature is now a constant okay now you want to know how the mean temperature is varying earlier wall temperature mean temperature and temperature at any location were just straight lines with equal slopes so now it is not the case right. So there from the Newton's uh, law of cooling you directly showed that the slopes have to be the same but here it is not true so therefore in this case the wall temperature is of course a constant but how the local temperature how the mean temperature vary is not clear. So to determine the variation what we will do is uh, just take a simple energy balance uh, so you take a duct so you take a control volume so this is your heat transfer delta Q to differential amount of heat transfer for this differential control volume and you have some enthalpy coming in and enthalpy which is leaving of course uh, there is a mass flow associated with this enthalpy so therefore you can apply energy balance and say my del Q dot is equal to M dot Cp into dtm okay so that is del, del Q is equal to m dot into delta H dh and dh corresponds to Cp into dtm because this enthalpy is the mean enthalpy or bulk mean or mean enthalpy that I am talking about so for the given heat transfer this is the corresponding change in the enthalpy of the fluid and I can relate my differential amount of heat input to the change in the mean temperature corresponding to the change in the enthalpy. So this is the starting point of the energy balance so I can just uh, uh, divide everywhere by dx so this will be now dtm by dx will be equal to now this is your heat transfer rate okay so this can be expressed in terms of heat flux you can write this as Q double prime which is in watt per meter square into if you assume that the control volume has a differential length dx into dx into perimeter right so this will be your surface area where you are adding heat all right so this will be divided by m dot cp and of course you are dividing by dx so dx dx cancels and now your Q double prime you can apply Newton's law of cooling and write this as H into T wall minus T mean okay. Therefore you have dTm by dx is equal to P by M dot Cp, P is your perimeter into H into T wall minus T mean. So this is, this is the expression coming out of the simple energy balance that you are doing. So we can what we can now do since your T wall is a constant we can write this 
as d by dx of t wall minus t m correct t wall is a constant so you can just introduce d by dx of t wall minus t m okay now there will be a minus sign so we we can put a minus sign on this side also p by m dot c p into h into t wall minus t m is already here okay so let us call t wall minus t m as some delta t okay so with this you can integrate this expression so this will be d delta t by delta t you can ex integrate this from delta t1 to delta t2 so what it means if you have a duct long duct at the inlet that will be your delta t1 that that is the difference between your wall temperature and the mean temperature and at the exit somewhere that is your delta t2 okay so once i have an equation for this temperature difference t wall minus t mean i can just simply integrate it from the inlet to the outlet so that this should be equal to minus p by m dot cp into h dx so this i integrate from 0 to your entire length or wherever whichever location there you want to find the appropriate temperature difference okay so this will give me ln of delta t2 by delta t1 equal to minus p by m dot cp h into x okay so or my t wall minus t mean at some location 2 by t wall minus t mean 1 will be equal to <coughs> exponential of minus p h x by m dot cp so this is my expression which tells me how the mean temperature varies because my wall temperature is constant if you know the mean temperature at some inlet from that you can calculate what is the mean temperature at some location x using this expression so if you plot this expression okay if you start with some mean temperature at the inlet you will find that the mean temperature keeps varying in a logarithmic fashion like this and it will asymptotically go and meet this t wall when your x goes to infinity so this becomes 0 and therefore your t mean will become t wall where your x goes to infinity okay so this is the variation of your t m okay the mean mean temperature of the fluid okay now having known this uh, and we have this particular expression here let the, let us call this as expression number 4 okay i started with 1 okay let me call this as 2 now. so we will use this expression now simplify for dtm by dx because why we are doing this is we have a dtm by dx term in this equation so we have to simplify this a little bit so for that we are using the energy balance and now we will simplify it also we should know how the mean temperature profile varies so for that we can use that equation and integrate it out so now from 2 so you can write your dtm by dx uh, as okay for the case of circular duct your perimeter is 2 pi r so pi d divided by your mass flow rate will be rho into pi by 4 d square rho a v so the velocity is mean velocity into c p into h t m so h t wall minus t mean I can replace this by your heat flux uh, q double prime okay so this cancels pi cancels here d cancel so this will give me uh, your q double prime will be k dt by dr at r equal to r naught this will be divided by your rho into um into d will be r naught by 2 and uh, 
I can write this as R naught by 2 into C p. So, this will be 2 R naught yes. So, that is correct. So, now I can club this as k by rho C p, k by rho C p is alpha. So, this can be written as d t m by d x is actually alpha times d t by d r at r equal to r naught divided by, uh, so this will be 2 times so u m r naught. So, this is my expression for d t m by d x in terms of d t by d r at r equal to r naught. This is a little bit of mathematical manipulation nothing more. So, as far as uh, circular duct is concerned you are just uh, writing in terms of your uh, diameter and of course, your mass flow rate little bit simplification and you get a relationship between d t m by d x and d t by d r at r equal to this is the gradient of temperature at the wall. So, this can be substituted into equation 1 for d t m by d x. So, substituting into 1. So, of course, on the right hand side you have the same on the left hand side you have uh, So, I am going to write my, uh, I am going to substitute my velocity profile, fully developed velocity profile for u. So, that will be twice u m into 1 minus r by r naught the whole square uh, by alpha and d t m by d x is substituted from here. So, which will be now this is t minus t wall by t m minus t wall d t m by d x will be 2 alpha by u m r naught into d t by d r at r equal to r naught. So, this is equal to the right hand side which is 1 by r d by d r of r e t by d r. Okay, so, here u m u m cancels alpha cancels here Okay, so therefore your final expression, which you have to solve, will be one by r d by dr of r dt by dr. That should be equal to four by r naught two into two four divided by r naught into one minus r by r naught the whole square. 1 by r by r naught the whole square into <coughs> t minus t wall by t mean minus t wall into dt dt by dr at r equal to r naught. Okay, so let us call this as uh, my equation number three. So, this is the equation finally, which uh, comes to the form which I want to express as a ODE in order to apply my shooting technique. Okay. So, you please stop and ask me if you have any questions, any doubts anywhere. So, these are all just mathematical manipulations, I am going a little bit fast here. So, now I am going to introduce a non dimensional temperature theta or phi I am using the phi here uh, to represent the non dimensional temperature I can write it as T minus T wall by T mean minus T wall and a non dimensional radial coordinate R star which is nothing but R by R naught. So, this I am going to substitute into my equation number 3 and rewrite the entire equation in terms of non dimensional variables phi and R star. Okay. So, if I do that, uh, so from this expression I get that my d t by d r is equal to t m minus t wall into d phi by d r. 
So, I can substitute for d by dr as T m minus T wall into d phi by dr T m minus T wall cancels here okay. and uh, I can also define my Nusselt number as d t by dr at r equal to r naught divided by T wall minus T m into diameter. So, diameter is nothing but twice r naught. So, if I use these expressions and substitute into this governing equation 3. I request all of you to do that and tell me what will be the final non dimensional non dimensional uh, equation for phi in terms of phi and r star. So, with that we will stop for today. So, what do I get? So, I have now I can write this one as 1 by r star d by dr star r star. Now, for dt by dr, I can substitute as t m minus t wall. t m minus t wall is a function of only x, so that can be taken outside the derivative, right. So, I have t m minus t r into d phi by dr star. So, this should be equal to uh, 4 by r naught into 1 minus this is r by r naught is r star. So, this I can write as r star square t minus t wall by t m minus t wall this is phi. So, this will be times phi and d t by d r is nothing but again t m minus t wall into d phi by d r. So, this I can write as t m minus t r t wall into d phi by d r at r equal to r naught. So, now uh, so I have uh, r r this cancels here. So, I have uh, r naught into r naught r naught square. Uh, so, I have divided by r naught square here and here I can have again r naught and I can write this as r star. So, r naught square r naught square will cancel T m minus T r T m minus T r cancels. So, therefore, I am left with the final non dimensional form d by d r star into r star d phi by d r star which is equal to now I have got the expression for Nusselt number as minus 2 r naught into d phi by d r. So, I can replace d phi by d r r by r naught as Nusselt number by 2 r naught. So, this will be a minus 4 uh, into 1 minus r star square into phi into this can be written as Nusselt number by 2 r naught. So, there is a factor of uh, uh, r naught which is somewhere I have to cancel. So, this is this is r naught r naught here cancels this is r naught square and on this side oh ok I think yeah yeah. So, this is anyway I can write this as uh, d, d phi by d r star you are right. So, this is already d phi by d r star. So, therefore, this will be in terms of Nusselt number ok. So, this is my uh, final expression you see this has reduced to an ODE now. I will call this as number 4. So, this entire expression is now a function of phi. Now, remember phi is a function of only r. So, earlier I had a partial differential equation now I had reduced that somehow by any means of manipulation and non dimensionalization to an ODE which is a function of r and this is of course an higher order ODE I can break it up into two first order ODEs and use shooting method. So, we will see that in the next class ok. I will just give a summary of uh, the shooting method which you are already used to to solve this equation ok.